How's it going? This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 483. Today, we're talking about the skill of being a martial arts instructor. My name is Jeremy Lesnack, your host for the show, founder here at Whistlekick, and everything that we do is in support of the traditional martial arts. If you want to know more about what we do, check out whistlekick.com. That's our online home. It's the place to also find our store. And if you make a purchase in there, make sure you use the code PODCAST15. That'll save you 15% off. And this show, this show gets its own website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We've got two brand new episodes for you every single week because our goal here at Whistlekick is to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists throughout the world. If you want to help the show and the work that we do, you can do a number of things. You can make a purchase, share an episode, follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick everywhere you could think of. You could tell a friend about what we're doing. Maybe pick up one of our books on Amazon, leave a review somewhere, or support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. Patreon's a place where we post exclusive content, blogs, audio, video, and if you contribute as little as $5 a month, you're going to get access to it. You can probably hear in my voice that I'm a little scratchy. Yes, I had a cold. No, uh, if you're listening to this near when the time it came out, I don't have the coronavirus. Hopefully we'll move on from not only the illness itself, but the fear that's driving so many people to do so many silly things. To be clear, I am not belittling the illness or trivializing the severity. I am trivializing the silly, irrelevant actions that some people are taking. But that's not what we're talking about today. What are we talking about? We are talking about teaching. Now, we've covered this subject in a few different ways over the years, but today, specifically, I'm addressing the skill set of being a martial arts teacher. Now, this topic came up in a conversation in the Facebook group that we run, Martial Arts Fun and Friends. It is a no-politics, positive, conversational Facebook group with hundreds of people in it, and you can either search for that, or if you go to whistlekick.com, you'll find a link in the navigation menu to it. It's been a fun group. We have multiple posts coming through on most days, and so far, everyone's been really great. We've been doing this for a few weeks now, so it's a great opportunity for me to get some discussion topics to expand upon on the show. Everything we do relates back to everything else, kind of like martial arts. I think we've all had the unfortunate experience of learning something or trying to learn something from someone who knew the material but didn't know how to teach it. And this shows up quite a bit in martial arts. You have people who become very skilled, even expert level practitioners. But when it comes to teaching those things, the things that made them great, well, they're not always so great. And then sometimes you have the opposite. You have people who are moderately competent, but are excellent instructors. And it's not what you would necessarily would think would happen. One would think that if you're good at something, you become really good at teaching that thing. But that's a completely different skill set. The ability to learn, the ability to do, and the ability to teach are very separate. And that's what we're tackling here today. I'm going to offer you some advice on how to become a better martial arts instructor. I'm going to offer you advice on how to teach the skill set of teaching and how if you run a martial arts school, you might consider making some adjustments that will help improve the skill of all of your teachers. The first bit of advice I have when you're teaching, you need to boil things down. You need to get to the one skill or concept or technique that you are trying to teach. If you start from that, if you start from that first thing and build your drills and your conversation around that, things tend to go a lot better. I see a lot of martial arts instructors who try to impress people, especially at seminars. And we've done entire episodes on teaching to people at seminars, people who you don't normally work with and the complexities that go into that. But even within one's own school. I see people who are trying to stack too much. They teach a form and they try to teach 12 movements at a time. What about teaching one? And then one more. When you start from very basic things, people get the ability 
to spend time with them. You teach one thing, they have a chance to focus on one thing. You try to show them 12, they might get one thing. Now, why do instructors do that? It's for one of a few reasons. It could be that they learn differently and they forget that others learn differently than they may learn. It could be ego. It could also be the fact that that's how they were taught. And I think that this is what it is for most people. Most instructors teach the way they were taught, which assumes that if that's what they're going to do, that that's the way everyone else learns. And of course, that's not true. So break it down. Start from one simple, basic thing. And when they get that, then add on. Next, if we consider that teaching is a skill set and it is something that you need to have practice at doing, we should start teaching people how to teach very early on. I've participated in some martial arts schools where if you've been in class more than a month and a brand new person comes in, you may be asked to demonstrate or to work with that person on the really, really basic stuff. If you know how to punch, you can teach that punch. And here's the great thing about that. By teaching things, it makes you better at them. And of course, there are some some benefits to the person learning because they don't feel as intimidated if they're a new student. But you're also removing some of the fear, some of that stigma of standing in front of the class the first time teaching everyone because you've been teaching one-on-one in small groups your entire martial arts training career. And you're going to figure some things out through that. The people that I see who do the worst at teaching are people who earn their black belt, have never taught anything to anyone, and are asked to step in and take class. Maybe the instructor is out sick, (laughs) or maybe something else has happened. Maybe you need to split the class and, hey, can you go work this thing with this group? And they just don't know how to handle it. They can do the thing all day long, but they've been thrown into a situation where in theory they have experience but they don't so i suggest in every martial arts school everyone should get the opportunity and really it shouldn't be a choice to teach things to people from a very early point there's no downside there one of the things i've found to be very helpful for my skills as in a teacher as in coach instructor of various physical disciplines is taking classes from different people. If you only ever learn martial arts from one person, it's going to be very hard to learn different ways to teach martial arts. So this is why seminars and training in multiple schools and and getting help from others become so critical because you start to understand, hey, if this doesn't work, then maybe this will work, then maybe this will work. And you have a variety of tools in your toolkit to try to pass on that concept. If I'm trying to teach a sidekick and the first drill I pick works for two out of 10 people, I'm not going to move on and teach something else. I need to get eight of 10 or ideally 10 of 10 people at least understanding that concept. Maybe they're not going to be able to implement it at that moment. Maybe they need to go practice some more with it. Two out of 10 isn't enough. So I pull something else out of my toolbox and say, okay, let's work on it this way. Let's work on it this way. And maybe every time we work on it, more and more people get the concept. But that toolkit has only been developed from attending a variety of martial arts schools and learning from dozens, if not hundreds of martial artists over the years. I consider every time I work with someone to be an educational opportunity both ways. If I'm partnered up with someone, I hope they have something to teach me, whether or not they realize it. And then the last piece I want to leave you with, and this is the piece that I see happen the least often, is getting feedback as a teacher. And this surprises me because in martial arts, we get feedback on everything. Oh, your toes aren't pointing in the right direction. We are really picky. And that's part of what we do. That's part of what makes martial arts special. But why not offer feedback on teaching? Now, I know some schools do this. And maybe your school is one of them and you're yelling at the microphone or the the phone, whatever you're using to listen to me right now. You're yelling at something saying, Jeremy, my school does this. And great. 
But in my experience, that's not what happens in most schools. If you truly want to have the best instructors, you need to have a curriculum for teaching them how to teach. They need time, they need goals, and they need to be reviewed. And if you do those things, your instructors will become much better instructors. To be honest, I had very little of that growing up and throughout any of my educational opportunities. You know, I did get some people saying, well, try this, try that. You know, I did receive some feedback and that was really helpful. But most of what I have learned has come from training under people who were not so good teachers. And I took those experiences and said, okay, clearly I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And I kind of self-reviewed. Am I doing that? Am I doing that? Oh, I did that. I don't want to do that again. So if you don't have someone to critique you, you've got a wonderful tool. Almost everybody has one. It's a smartphone. Video your class. Sit down and watch it. How did it go? You can see, based on the response from the students behind you, how it went. Did they learn the things you wanted them to learn? You're a teacher. What is your job? Your job is to pass on knowledge. If you didn't pass on knowledge appropriately, that's on you to find a new way, a better way, and to become a better instructor. If you have thoughts on how to become a better teacher, I'd love to hear them. Head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Find this, episode 483, and leave a comment. And while you're over there, you can see all the show notes and everything else that we've got over there, photos, videos, tons of stuff. If you're down to support us in all of our work, you have lots of options. Make a purchase at whistlekick.com. Don't forget the code PODCAST15 to save 15%. You might also consider buying one of our Amazon books, telling others about the show, or supporting us, patreon.com slash whistlekick. And if you see someone out in the wild wearing a Whistlekick shirt or a hat, make sure you say hello. We'd love to hear your guest suggestions and our social media accounts. There's a lot of activity there. Check them out. At Whistlekick, my email address, if you need anything, if you want to make a guest suggestion, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.